Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 30 of the chapter Equilibrium. In this video, I am going to tell you about the ionization constant of weak acids. As we know that weak acids dissociate and when they dissociate only partially, they lead to the formation of an or, or the establishment of an equilibrium. And therefore, it is possible to calculate the equilibrium concentrations and calculate the equilibrium constant for such a reaction or for such a reaction mixture. And if you, since it's an acid that we are talking of, it is possible to find out the pH of such a solution when the equilibrium has been established. So let us start with an equation here. Assuming that HX is an acid which is a weak acid which partially dissociates in water to give us hydronium ion and X negative ion. And the double arrow shows that an equilibrium has been established and the reaction is proceeding in both the directions. Now let us assume that initially we started with a concentration of C of the acid. Whatever the acid was, the weak acid, we started with the initial concentration of C. That is, we added that amount of acid in one liter of, to make one liter of the solution in water. And initially, we only had the concentration C of the acid. And since the reaction has not yet started, we have the products, the concentration of the products initially was zero. So we have zero hydronium ion concentration, initial concentration. We have zero of whatever the negative ion is in the acid. Then after that, we talk of an extent of, uh, let us assume that a certain extent of the acid dissociated. Now, whatever this extent of acid has dissociated, we try to find out the uh, concentration of, let us say that alpha is the degree of dissociation or the extent of dissociation. If the ionization that took place was by a degree of alpha, that alpha is a degree of what? That alpha is a degree of that initial concentration. That is, if I started with, let us say, 100 uh, moles per liter, the alpha would be that degree, let us say, half of it dissociated. Half of what? Half of 100 dissociated. So whatever is this degree of dissociation, it is of the initial concentration. So the extent of ionization can be written as, let us say that alpha was the degree of dissociation and C was the initial concentration. So C alpha would be the uh, extent of ionization that took place. So from the at equilibrium, the concentration of Hx now would be C was the initial concentration out of which C alpha has dissociated. C was the initial concentration out of which C alpha has dissociated, which means that in this reaction, it is C alpha which has participated. We started with a higher concentration, a part of it dissociated and the stoichiometry of this equation is according to this value this number of moles. So C alpha dissociated. So at equilibrium, what would your concentration of HX be? The initial concentration was C out of which C alpha dissociated. So I've written it, I've written a minus sign here. So at equilibrium, you are left with C minus C alpha is the equilibrium concentration of the weak acid. Now, according to the stoichiometry of this equation, if you started with one mole of HX, it reacted with one mole of water to give you one mole of hydronium ions. That is the number of moles of HX is equal to the number of moles of hydronium ions and the number of moles of X negative ions. Therefore, you would say that if C alpha dissociated, then according to the stoichiometry of this equation, the extent of ionization was C alpha. Therefore, the number of moles of formation of H3O positive and X negative would also be C alpha, C alpha, because it has to be equal to the number of moles of the acid dissociated. So now, at equilibrium, what is the concentration of uh, all the species? The concentration of the acid would be C minus C alpha because C alpha was the amount dissociated and C was the initial concentration. And here, hydronium ion and the X negative had zero value. They, was, they were not there in the solution in the beginning. And therefore, it is only C alpha that was produced. Therefore, their concentration even at equilibrium remains as C alpha, C alpha. 
So what have we done? The idea was to find out the ionization constant or the equilibrium constant for the acid. So in order to calculate the equilibrium constant, we should know the equilibrium concentrations of all the species. So now we know the equilibrium concentrations of all the species. And since water is a liquid, I would like to bring your attention here. Since water is a liquid, we avoid or ignore its concentration because that is 100% pure. And we, in the equilibrium constant equation, liquids do not matter. So now we know that equilibrium constant is equal to the concentration of the products that is H positive or H3O positive ion into X negative that is the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. So only HX because that is aqueous and water we are ignoring. That is the equilibrium constant for this acid. It is also known as the ionization constant. So when we substitute the values of these equilibrium concentrations in this equation, what do we get? Ka, that is equilibrium constant, constant or the ionization constant would be the concentration of the products that is C alpha into C alpha. So H positive into X negative would be C alpha into C alpha. Therefore, it is C square alpha square divided by C into 1 minus alpha. We take C common here and put 1 minus alpha into the bracket. So Ka would be equal to C square alpha square upon C 1 minus alpha. And if you cancel out one of the C's, you'll get C alpha square upon 1 minus alpha. This is the ionization constant or the equilibrium constant for a weak acid or the dissociation constant for the weak acid. Now, once you know this dissociation constant, what idea do you get about the strength of the acid or how weak or strong is the acid? Because that is what we are uh, aiming at, the pH. We should know the strength of the acid. The higher the value of the acid, or, or of the higher the value of the equilibrium constant, it means when would the value of Ka be high when the numerator is greater and the denominator is smaller, and the numerator has the concentration of products and the denominator has concentrations of reactants. The more the concentration of the products, the higher the value of Ka, which means that the higher the value of Ka, the stronger is the acid. Now, what do we do with this equilibrium constant? How is it useful to us? One, with the help of equilibrium constant or Ka or the ionization constant of the weak acid, we can calculate the equilibrium concentrations. It helps us to calculate equilibrium constants, uh, concentrations. It helps us to find out the degree of ionization or it helps us to calculate the pH of the final solution. So these are the applications of finding out Ka. If we know Ka, these are the things that can be found or vice versa. If you know this equation, you could calculate even Ka from these values. So usually our interest is in finding out how strong or how weak an acid is. So how do we find that out? By knowing its pH. So there are steps. Once we know the equilibrium constant of a weak acid, you can follow these certain steps to find out the pH of the solution, the resultant solution of that weak acid. What are the steps to finding out the pH of such a solution? The first step is that the species, you have to identify which is an acid, which is a base. So you'll get two equations here if you really look at it. You'll get HX plus H2O will give you H3O positive plus X negative. And there's another reaction that is also taking place. That is, that gives you the ionic product of water. You have water molecule reacting with water molecule and one of the molecules acting as an acid, the other one acting as a base and it results in the formation of H3O positive and OH negative, if you remember, which has the equilibrium constant or the ionic product of water, which is equal to 10 to the power minus 14. We are already aware of it. If you know the equilibrium constant of this particular reaction, then you will compare which is the stronger acid because whichever is has a higher value of equilibrium constant that actually is the main reaction and the other is the subsidiary reaction right so what are the steps that you would follow the first step is first you have to identify the acidic species and the basic species the species before dissociation are identified as the Bronsted, you use the Bronsted Laurie definition to identify these species. This is a proton donor, therefore, this is an acid, this is a proton acceptor, therefore, it's a base. 
After identifying the species, whether it is an acid or a base, the next step is that you write down the balanced equations for all possible reactions that take place. And you also write the reaction of that species which acts both as acid and base. And what is that species? That is water. In this reaction, water is acting as a base. In the next reaction of water with water, one of the molecules is acting as an acid and the other is acting as a base. So you have water molecule acting as a base in one reaction and as an acid in the other reaction. So we write both the equations. So you will write balanced chemical equations for all possible reactions, that is, with a species which acts both as acid and as a base. The third step is you compare the values of Ka. The Ka for e, uh, the ionization constant of water is known to us. It is 10 to the power minus 14. It is that value on the basis of which the pH scale has been made. So since you know that value and if Ka value is given to you, the reaction with the higher Ka is identified as the primary reaction. You identify that as the primary reaction and the other one that is usually the water is to water because there's so little difference between their acidic or basic character that becomes the subsidiary reaction. After doing this, once you have identified the primary reaction, usually this one would be your primary reaction where the weak acid reacts with water and gives you the proton and the negative ion. Then you write down this equation and you make this table as we made here. In this table, you write down the initial concentrations of all the reactants and the products in the first step. So you, in the first step, you enlist in a tabular form. The first step is you write the initial concentration, which is C. Then you write down in the next step, the change in concentration on proceeding to equilibrium. When it goes towards equilibrium, what is the change in concentration that takes place in terms of that initial concentration and in terms of alpha? that is the degree of dissociation or the degree of ionization. So second step is to write down the change in concentration on proceeding to equilibrium in terms of alpha, that is the degree of ionization. And that is what we did here. We said that if alpha was the amount that dissociated, alpha of what? Of C. So in terms of alpha, we write this is C alpha that dissociated and therefore the concentration at equilibrium for both hydronium and X negative would also be C alpha and C alpha. So on the basis of that, we write down the equilibrium concentrations of all the reactants and the products based on this value. So we write down the equilibrium concentrations. To write down the equilibrium concentrations, we must subtract this value from the initial concentration. So initially we had C, this reacted, so this much was reduced, therefore final concentration at equilibrium would be C minus C alpha. But in the products, this is the amount that is formed, therefore it has a positive value, so you will add this to zero. You see, this is formed, therefore this is to be added to the initial concentration, this is to be subtracted from the initial concentration, so equilibrium concentration becomes this. Equilibrium concentration would be zero plus C alpha, is C alpha, again here zero plus C alpha would be C alpha. So in this tabular form, you calculate the concentrations of uh, at equilibrium in terms of the dissociation, uh, what uh, the degree of dissociation or ionization. After this step, now when you calculate, you substitute the equilibrium concentration in this equation. You substitute these values in this equation and then you solve it for alpha. You find out the value of alpha. Once you find out the value of alpha, you can substitute the value in the initial equation and calculate the equilibrium concentrations of all the substances. So you substitute the equilibrium concentration in equilibrium constant equation for the principal reaction and you solve it for alpha. You find out the value of alpha. After and what is alpha? It is the degree of ionization. You calculate the degree of ionization from this. The next step is that you calculate the concentration of species in the principal reaction. Once you found out the value of alpha, you substitute that value in the initial reaction. And that is in the, according to the stoichiometry of the initial reaction. 
and you calculate the concentration of the species in the principal reaction and once you have calculated the concentration of the species in the principal reaction that is when equilibrium has been established what do you arrive at you arrive at the concentration of h3o positive at equilibrium and in order to calculate what was the aim to find out the ph in order to calculate the ph that is what you need you need the hydronium ion or the hydrogen ion concentration once you get the hydrogen ion concentration in order to calculate the ph all you have to do is find out the negative log of this value of the hydronium ion concentration that you get finally and when you do that when you get the hydronium ion concentration that is the ph of the solution which tells you how acidic or how basic this particular weak acid the solution of this particular weak acid is so with this i'll finish this video in the next video we i'll be solving a couple of problems to explain this further to you and then we'll move on to the ionization constant of bases so if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now